Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona in partnership with Photo Forum once again, and you are watching another great episode of Garage Talk, so let's get on it. Now today, we are going to be doing the button walkthrough of the Canon R50. It's their new entry-level mirrorless camera. Now, if you've missed it, I'm gonna have a card up top somewhere here for not only the menu walkthrough, okay, which is very important from front to back, back to front, but the review, which the card's gonna be up here for the Canon R50 as well. And in that review, I said this can set a standard, a new standard for what an entry-level mirrorless camera should be. I talked about pros and cons, all that good stuff, so I urge you to watch that. But today, we are specifically talking about um, the buttons, the screen layout, some of the features of the camera externally and how it controls this camera. It's very simplistic and I think Canon did a really good job. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna power this on. I am gonna rotate this out. I'm gonna leave the lens cover on because there's really no reason to take it off at the moment. And we are actually going to, I'm gonna use my little pointer here. Hopefully this will help and can kinda see top down. We are actually gonna start <clears throat> with the lens and the lens button. So as you can see, there's this button here for everybody who's new and doesn't realize what this is for. When you press this in, you're going to be able to rotate counterclockwise and remove the lens. You can see here, okay, that the, now the sensor is exposed. You definitely don't wanna to touch that. You can see the contactors for the autofocus lens. And if we look, we can see those contactors, those matching contactors there. We see this red mark. This is gonna be an alignment mark when you're putting your lens back on. We see the actual flange, all right, for the camera, for the lens. And then here, um, and I should point out on the RF lenses, the RFS lenses, uh, this is plastic, where on the standard RFL lenses, that is actually metal. And if we look, we can see we have another red mark. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna line that up. We're gonna rotate again and lock that lens into place. Super easy when it comes to doing that. But again, if you're new to an interchangeable lens camera system, I'm hoping this helps you out, especially with this Canon R50. So now, if we look to the left-hand side, we are going to see the microphone port underneath this rubber thing. And this is so you can hook in an external microphone, whether that be a lavalier microphone, whether that be a shotgun microphone, this is where you're going to do that. Now, Canon does not offer audio monitoring via a headphone jack on this camera, and you cannot use a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter to achieve that. So there is no other audio auto monitoring except for your audio levels that you'll see on the back screen when recording video. But this is for your external microphone. All right, gonna pop that back into place. And if we turn it around to the other side, all right, we are going to see our USB-C port. Now you can use a cable, uh, Rode makes a cable that's USB-C to Lightning that allows you to hook this up to your iPhone specifically for transferring photos. So this way you don't have to use the wireless app if you don't want to. And then we have a micro HDMI cable right here, all right? This is gonna allow you to connect to an external monitor, such as a Shinobi or a small HD, or um, there's a variety of other manufacturers that do that. You can hook this up to your TV, I guess, if you were so inclined as well. Um, so um, your computer, if you want to use this as a webcam or get feedback for vlogging, have that turned around and get some feedback. So that's good. And with a an $800 entry level camera, having a micro HDMI doesn't surprise me. That's that's par for the course. So um, I wouldn't look at that as a, a bad thing, uh, any any way, shape, or form. So we're going to put that cap back on there. Nice little weather resistant <laughs> cap. Um, certainly not weatherproof. We want to make that distinction. And if we look, we have a lug on this side and a lug on this side for our camera straps. We have the holes for our external or for our internal microphone here. This is just the witness mark on where your sensor alignment is. On the top, we have the hot shoe. Now this is, just simply sliding that out, the new Canon multimedia hot shoe. And here, over the next few months, Canon's gonna be releasing new flashes, 
audio adapters, a variety of different items that will take advantage of the small to media shoe. Sony's had one for quite some time. I'm really excited that all the new gen Canon cameras, the R6 Mark II, the R3, here in the R50, the R7, we're seeing this trickle down, which is really exciting because now all Canon shooters, whether they're entry level or professional level, are able to take advantage of that. Here we have the shutter button, pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna use this when you wanna take a photo or focus, halfway down for focus, fully depressed, you're gonna be able to take your shot. We have our ISO button. This is gonna, um, when you engage this, this will allow you to control or adjust what you wanna use for ISO, how sensitive, uh, for light, sen light sensitivity of your sensor. You're going to use this dial, this hard dial, to adjust that ISO, but you're also gonna use this dial to adjust your shutter speed and your aperture, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, as we mosey around through uh, the rest of the items. We have this red button right here is going to engage recording for video only, okay? So when you're in video mode and you wanna go ahead and <clears throat> start recording, this is what you're gonna do right there. Now, we have our on-off switch. This is really self-explanatory. Put in the on, she's ready to go. Turn it off, your power's gonna turn it off. I apologize if you hear the jets flying around. Once again, I live close to an Air Force base. My opinion is the sound of freedom, but sometimes it interrupts the recording, but we'll keep going, I'm sure it'll be okay. So now, if we look at this dial right here, this is often referred to as a PASM dial. So as I was saying, this is often referred to as a uh, PASM dial. Now, typically, Canon has it a little different, but you'll see a PASM uh, PASM, which stands for Program Aperture Shutter Speed and Manual. Canon, ha Canon has it laid out a little differently. And we have Manual, which is, is going to give you full control of all your settings, your ISO, your shutter speed, your aperture. You still can have your ISO in auto ISO though, which I'll show you that here in just a moment. AV is going to be aperture priority and this allows you to choose your aperture, but the camera will choose your shutter speed or your ISO as well if you have it in auto ISO. If you have it in TV, this stands for time value or shutter priority. So you are going to choose your shutter speed and the camera will then choose your aperture accordingly. Um, then we have our program mode, all right? We have, this will allow you to have some functionality or some change uh, control over camera settings, but the camera is gonna make a majority of the decisions for you. Now, if we go into auto mode, all right? Auto mode uh, is just turns this into a point and shoot. That's it, you turn it on, you're in auto plus mode, you hit the shutter button for focus and then boom. It's gonna choose your focusing mode, your shutter speed, your aperture, your scene, all that stuff. You are giving up all control to the camera by default, all right? Now, going into our next mode, um, this is auto enhanced, and what this allows you to do is to create a scrapbook of sorts automatically with the photos that you take. It's a neat feature. I didn't check it out in the review too much. To me, it's a little bit gimmicky. Um, again, this is something that you could do in post by choosing your favorite photos and then stitching them together. If you want to do that in camera, you have the ability to here in this Canon. Now, this is going to be um, a special scene. So if you put it into this mode, now you have options to choose specific scenes and the camera has presets based on what scene you are choosing. Nature, portrait, indoor, outdoor, macro, all these different things. This is the one that you would put that in. S-C-N, special scene. This next one is gonna be for all your creative filters. If you wanted to do vivid, monochrome, uh, standard, which it's not really a creative filter, but it is on there. Um, more contrast, less contrast. So it gives you some options there going into this mode as well. If we come around here, this uh, icon stands for video mode. So this is what you would have it in if you are in video mode. And once you're in video mode, you have the option to choose what type of video mode do you wanna be in. Do you wanna be in full manual? 
Do you want to give that control over to the camera? So once again, you're allowed to choose how you want this camera to function. And then if we go back, we're in manual mode, where now we, as the photographer or videographer, have full creative control. Now, if we flip this over really quick, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. So we have manual, we have aperture priority, we have shutter priority, we have program mode, we have intelligent auto, which is auto plus, hybrid auto, special scene, creative filters, movie recording, and of course, back to manual. And we're just gonna tap okay, because this is a full touch screen. Now, again, you know, as far as that goes, uh, that's just exactly what I said, but every time you choose a mode, it brings that up on the back of the camera, which is actually very nice. Um, Canon has a great user interface that way, um, gives you a bunch of rich feedback as far as the choices you're making and how they're going to affect your camera. So now if we go over the back of the screen here, the asterisk button, you can actually program and this also acts in as a zoom in feature when you're looking at your photos. So you could punch into that, all right? This is going to be um, your auto exposure lock, and this is also going to change what we see on the back of the camera as well. Here you can go directly into the menu. Here you can go into your ISO control or your autofocus. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then if we hit that again, we come back out. Now this is a touch screen and you can kind of see that moving around as far as focus goes. To me, it's kind of annoying. I have my touch screen turned off for the most part on my Sony cameras, but that's what those buttons affect. Now, if we hit the information button, you're gonna see this screen change from what it is now. You have all this rich feedback on what camera settings you have going on. Now it's going to show a level and you can see because of the way I have it, it's a little crazy, but hopefully you could see that flittering around. That's the actual internal digital level. If we hit it again, you now have a clean screen. If we hit it again, we have this very utilitarian setup. And here, the touchscreen is actually deactivated, but this shows you all the settings that you have. If we press it one more time, we're gonna be on this very basic back screen, which gives you some information, but not nearly as much as to where we started. And as you can see, I'm gonna put on my readers here so it's a little easier. We have our mode. Oops. We have our mode, how many images we have left, how much time is left on our card for recording uh, video. This is going to basically be a return, okay, to center. This is going to be our Q button, which we have a hard button right here for. We have our auto white balance. Um, this is going to be for our uh, filters, any type of creative filters that we might be using. This is going to be what profile we're in. Um, this is also, now we have our creative filters off, and this is why this is grayed out. Our aspect ratio, um, we have our, this is gonna be magnifying in, oops, let's go back here, magnifying in. If we actually uh, were doing manual focus, we would hit that, and that's gonna be our focus assist, okay? So we're gonna back out of that. We have our ISO. We have our exposure. As you can see, I'm horribly underexposed because the cap's on. Um, we have our aperture, which you can see here, and then we have our shutter speed, all right? This is the mode that we're in for uh, drive high with electronic shutter, all right? This is going to be our metering, which we have evaluative. We are shooting raw. We are an animal priority as far as recognition, not person priority, and I'll show you how to change that here in a minute. And then we are in servo, which is going to be continuous focusing mode, all right? And we're gonna let this jet finish flying over. I apologize, my friends, <laughs> um, for that. It happens, you know, sometimes. Now, if we finish looking at the hard buttons first before we come over here, all right, if we press in the Q center button, okay, that's to choose, and that's also to bring up the quick menu, all right? And from the quick menu, and you can see how it correlates with those icons, here I can change the type of focusing that I wanna do, AI focus, 
servo focus, one shot focus. I can change um, subject detection. And notice here, it's telling you two criteria for automatic selection of main subjects to track. I could put that on auto. Here for my metering, I can choose um, the bright background. So this is gonna be partial metering. Um, this should be center weighted metering. Here is evaluative metering. <clears throat> And again, it's great because you're getting all this rich information from Canon. Ideal for most scenes, also used, whoops. When we press evaluative, it says ideal for most scenes, also used for backlit subjects. So it's great that as you choose your aspect ratio, choose the image aspect ratio width to height you know, auto white balance. You're going to, for natural looking colors under specific lighting types, and you have all your adjustments that you can make. And then this is gonna take us back. So this is great because not only Canon is giving you this quick menu system, which all cameras have by the way, but I love how the way there is set up because as you go to choose something, it is giving you um, information on what that choice is and how it affects what you're doing so, which is really great. And we can simply hit the Q menu again to back out of that or that little back area arrow. So here again, we have our dial, all right? And as I said before, this is gonna allow you to change some settings. And as you can see, this little orange indicator means the dial right now is for our shutter speed and we can see our shutter speed change. If we press our aperture, we can now use this dial to change our aperture back and forth, and then once we have it set, we're good to go. We can lock that in. If we were to change, um, here's gonna be our exposure, all right? We can back out of that, and this one's going to be for our ISO. And so when we're changing our ISO, we can simply rotate this through auto or rotate it through the full ISO spectrum, depending on what you wanna do. Now we can also hit this. We have the little plus minus button. I have this set up to rotate through my options. So if I press up, it's gonna go straight to my aperture. If I press up again, it's gonna go to my exposure. If I press up again, it's gonna come back over to my shutter speed, but it will not go to the ISO because there is a dedicated button up top. Remember, we talked about that, the ISO button right here that I'm pushing, and then there it's gonna change to your ISO. But yes, by simply pressing up, you can scroll through those three. Now, by pressing off to the side, we have access to our drive mode, which also has our timers, 10 second, two second, and continuous timer. If we press to the left, we are going to get choices for autofocus or manual focus. And then pressing down is going to be our trash can. Um, this, we can delete files directly from the camera. And then we have our playback button to review photos or videos that we've taken. And then we have our menu button, which is gonna take us to our main menu to change any of the settings we'd like to. And again, this is fully touchscreen, so, or you can navigate it. It's still kind of odd. I still tend to navigate the old school way with the hard buttons um, as opposed to touchscreen, but you know, I'm kind of trained that way to use the hard buttons and not the touchscreen on that. So the menu system is actually very easy to, to navigate. Again, card was linked in the beginning. Check out that full menu tutorial video. We hit the menu button and then we're out again. A couple other items, and I hope you can see this from up top. We have our diopter right here. This is gonna let you fine tune the EVF to your eye, all right? In case you wear readers like me or contact lenses or a combination of the two, this lets you fine tune that to your eye. And then down here, we have our battery port, all right? And our SD card. Now note on all Canon cameras, when you open up the battery door, um, the camera will shut off, all right? Some people say, what's the big deal on that? And again, this is all Canon cameras. If you're recording and one card fills up and it starts dumping into the next card, I don't wanna interrupt my recording, but I'm gonna have to if I wanna change out card number one so two can start spilling over into one again and have to perform a continuous cycle. So any cameras, you can open up that card slot and hot swap the cards is what we refer to it as without any issues. But the moment you do it on a Canon camera, it is gonna shut off. And so that's just a little bit of a note there as far as that goes. All right, before we go any further, why don't we talk about today's partner, PhotoForum. Now for over 50 years, PhotoForum has been serving photographers in the Valley of the Sun. 
And all over across the state, to be honest with you, I have customers that come up from Tucson, down from Sedona, Prescott, Payson. It's amazing. And I'm so thrilled that they choose to come to Photo Forum. Now, Photo Forum is definitely a community shop. And over the last two years, we've made great strides improving our accessibility to our customers by offering a variety of entry level classes for the beginning photographer and videographer, by offering community photo walks, group hikes for the landscape photographers. It's amazing. In here, since the start of 2023, we've made a concentrated effort to bring in a variety of different gear for our aspiring videographers as well. So not only are we serving our photographers and continuing to serve our photographers, but now moving forward, we're gonna be the place to be, place to go for serving videographers. So if you're a local videographer in Phoenix and you're looking for some gear, if you're looking for some accurate information, come on down, we'll definitely take care of you. Monday through Friday, we're open on Saturdays. It's a great time, guys, seriously. So come in and check that out. All right, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you might see me. Follow us on the social media. Those links are gonna be down in the description for sure. So let's go ahead and continue on with our button tour. And to be honest with you guys, that's it, all right? We've gone over the entirety of the Canon system for the R50 as far as the buttons, the quick menu, the touch screen, everything that it can do for you as far as that goes. Um, you know, again, it's a super, super simple interface. And one of the things I do enjoy about Canon cameras, and I've said before, full disclosure, I'm a Sony shooter. And again, this camera wasn't given to me by Canon nor Photoform. It's going back here. I've had it for a little bit too long. They're kind of anxious to get it back. Um, as a Sony shooter, I, I wish their inner, it's coming along, but I wish their interface were similar to this, all right? You have a fantastic touchscreen experience. Um, you are able to access everything via the screen or via hard dial. And it's not only accessing those options, it's the fact that Canon tells you what those options are gonna do very explicitly. By changing this, you are doing that. And that's something beginning photographers and videographers need. And as these menus become more complex, the more things our cameras can do, it's something that I've seen even seasoned veterans like myself could use now and then. So I'm not, you know, looking it up with Google or on YouTube for that matter to see what a specific icon or new change means. So I think Canon does a great job with this and I'm very pleased overall with the user experience with the menu system. The more I use it, the more I, I, I am appreciating it. Um, especially as again, as a Sony user, I wish we had some of these refinements on, on those cameras. So, there it is, my friends, the Canon R50 button tour. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did and you made it to this point, hit the like, subscribe, bell notification icon. It's the trifecta we enjoy so much here at Get Out Arizona. Helps out the video, helps out the channel. We are gonna have some social media down below for Photo Forum, number one, the Instagram and Facebook, and we'll have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook for Get Out Arizona. It's the devil's work, but it's needed because that's where we announce all group hikes, all group bike rides. It's a lot of fun. We're a very interactive group here. There's also gonna be some additional links. Those are affiliate links with Amazon. If you make a qualifying purchase with one of those links, you will not be charged any additional money, but we will receive a very small commission and it helps out with gas money, park money or park pass money and coffee money, the other trifecta that we enjoy so much here at Get Out Arizona. So my friends, what do we say at this point? Be kind to yourself and others, be amazing stewards on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get Out Arizona. We'll see you on that next adventure, my friends. Take care, everybody.